Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am kind of reviewing this little mini portable sewing machine. We are out of town in Arizona, so I ordered this on Amazon. It was like free two day shipping. Probably the cheapest one on Amazon. That's what I wanted. I wanna teach my daughter how to sew and I can also use it <laughs> while we are out of town as long as it does like the basic uh, stitching of paper. So this is what the box looks like. There were several different brands and companies that make this. This is KPCB, but they all look like this, which is, you know, I guess they just put their own little emblem on it and switched up. But this also came with a platform so that you could like do extended like, you know, pants or paper or whatnot. This is the sewing machine. It is itty bitty. Look at this is my hand. I don't have man hands. <laughs> it's not the easiest sewing machine compared to what I have at home, like a normal standard electric sewing machine. The whole threading the thread to get into the needle is very, I don't know, it's not my favorite. And then winding the bobbin, which this is a bobbin right here, um, is not my favorite as well. But it does sew. This was my daughter practicing stitching. If you guys uh, follow me on Instagram, she was testing it out. Please be aware, I did go through with black permanent marker and labeled each of the loops. So one, two is the tension rod, three, another loop, four is the like the lift, five, six is this one right here, this circle, and then seven would be the actual needle. So this is your normal thread. This is where your thread is. You have to have your thread on a bobbin. I was like, who, who invented this? You're gonna have to, for instance, you buy thread, then you're gonna have to wind the thread onto a bobbin. It's like, why didn't they do it like a normal spool to go on top of, you know? It just, it doesn't make sense that they did that. I don't know, in my opinion. So basically you thread everything through and I'm going to do that with you, but I don't like this whole thing. I literally was trying to figure out how to do this. You have to use force and pull it off. And with that, the spring goes flying. So that's not my favorite. This spring goes right here. And then you put your, um, your this plastic thing through your little bobbin and it has to be clockwise and then it just like pops back on so if you change the color and everything else you have to do that every time so i don't like this but i did discover out when i was winding and filling up a bobbin this little contraption at the top pops up this is for winding your bobbins I was like, why not stick the spool of thread that you guys have at home, see so how the hole on the bottom, and stick it on here, and then start your threading process from here to here versus here to here, and it works just fine. So I will not be using this little area right here. So I'm gonna show you your thread going a little bit on the top. Then you are going, oh, this is what I don't like about the threading part. You have to get the bottom of your thread you know, like you would be sticking it in the needle and you have to physically thread it through this little circle. So it's kind of like you have to thread something 10 times more than you, you want to because a nicer sewing machine is usually just hooks and you just like hook it on. This, you have to physically get the end and stick it through the holes. So I did not like that. Then you stick it through the tension discs right here, not the spring part, but the actual discs. That's the tension rod. Then you have to get it again find the bottom of your thing, and you have to feed it through this hole. So the space between this little hole and this tension rod is, is not a lot. Look, if you have big fumbly fingers, if you have shaky hands, this is not gonna be the easiest for you. So I would definitely keep that in mind. Okay, I got it in. And then you have to stick it through the hole on this part. And if this is not in the best location, you just get this little hand, the little spinny over here, and it controls where that lands. You're gonna want it at the top right here so that you can have easy access to that hole. So again, you have to get the bottom of the thread, stick it through the hole. In a nicer sewing machine, it just hooks on. You literally, it's super fast and easy versus having to thread it through a physical hole. You bring it down and you have to stick it in this hole. Again, I labeled it number five so that my daughter can remember where to put it. So again, you have to feed it through that hole and then you have to feed it through this hole right here. So do you see what I'm talking about? It's not the easiest like threading, re-threading. Re I don't know if that's the name of it, like so. And then say you changed out your bobbin, it just pops in and out. 
and it has the string has to go clockwise, meaning when your spool starts spinning, is it going clockwise? Yes, it is. And you just pop it in there, get your little string and put it in this little crack, this string right here. And then push it in. And then you have to raise your needle to the highest point, rotate your little um, thing away from you to move the, the needle at the highest point. And then the needle, which is so odd, I didn't even know sewing machines did that. Normally you stick the string going like this, forward and backwards. The needle, you thread it from the side. So you have to thread it left to right, which I will do right now. If you don't have the easiest time threading stuff, the sewing machine comes with this like little threader thing. So there I have it in my needle and then I just push the string to the very back, feed it through the back. See how it comes with a little threader? So it came with a black spool, a white spool, and then a couple, a couple empty ones. I just put some green thread uh, that I had. So now I have everything threaded. The little foot in the back is this like little wobbly, like, see how it's just like eh? But this lifts up the, the foot. This is the foot right here, not the foot that you're physically pushing on with your foot. Stick it in, put the foot back down, this little tab right here, and you are ready to go. So I'm gonna slowly do it so that the, you know, the thread feeds itself. Do you notice how loud it is? Like my sewing machine is not that loud at home. And then there is another option right here, high and low. That is the speed of the sewing machine. Right now I have it on low and it's loud. There's a light, turns on and off. And then this, you can sew without the foot that's on the floor right here. The foot that you're pushing with your foot, you can physically sew with just pressing this. So maybe like so. Lift up the needle all the way out. Lift up my sewing foot, pull it out, give it enough slack and then come up here. You see right here, it has a little scissor symbol that cuts the strings for you. And then you're ready to start all over again. Here's the stitch. Um, another downfall with this just quick, easy, portable sewing machine, you can add batteries to this. You could literally sew in the passenger seat of your car, um, but you don't get different stitch options like zigzag or the, the width and the depth of the, you know, the strings and the holes and the spacing. So you don't have any options. It's basically just a straight stitch, high speed, low speed, and that's it. <laughs> just the speed is the only thing that you can customize. I also forgot to mention that this sewing machine does not have a back stitch. So you're manually gonna have to roll this backwards to get it to like the, um, a back stitch means the needle goes, um, like it sucks your project back the other way to go over the stitching you already did so that it doesn't come undone. So I definitely would not get this if you're sewing fabrics and stuff <laughs> because it doesn't even have a back stitch. This particular one that I got, there is cheaper versions that come without this little platform. Look at it, it's just folded up little legs that pop open, like so, on both sides. And this lines up perfectly with the sewing machine. It's got little rubber grippers, and look, now you have an entire like platform. And then right here is a little storage, storage unit space, probably for your um, bobbins and whatnot. It's got a little measuring thing right here. I thought this was cool, this part, um, it'll be easier for my daughter. So that's why I paid a little extra to get this little platform. Let me show you how to change your bobbin color. A bobbin, again, is this little metal bobbin. So what you're gonna do is, let me take my string out. So this thing pulls up, but I use that for my thread no matter what, so it stays up. And then over here on the actual handle, you'll see this little, it's actually a button. And you have to like twist, hit it a couple times, it'll pop out. The, the instructions say to like push it in and rotate towards you counterclockwise and it'll pop out. Sometimes I just hit it a bunch of times and it pops out. So that's not my favorite either. Then your little bobbin literally just like stabs on and stays on there like that. You don't have to push hard. But what you do is it says you get your thread Put it on the top. You get your thread and wrap it around five or six times, it said. Your thread is going clockwise. It literally, it literally just winds it up on the left-hand side. The instructions say you physically have to 
put your hand here and feed the thread where you need it to go on the bobbin. I'm like, what? My normal sewing machine automatically does that for you. So literally look, you have to hold it and come to the left, come to the right, come to the left. You see how I'm moving my finger left and right so that the thread goes left to right to the middle, just wherever it starts getting bald, you have to go there. So I thought that was really inconvenient versus a normal bobbin. It just, it does it for you like on a nicer sewing machine. So that's a little bit of a pain and it takes way longer. Okay, so that was just an example of how you do the bobbin. All right, so my, your questions, am I going to return this? No, um, my daughter is going to be using it and I know how to use it. And I let, I showed her how to thread it once with all my numbers I labeled with marker and she knows how to do it. So far it has not um, clogged up, jammed up, no broken needles, so that's good. But um, I had a couple girls on Instagram and some of the reviews on Amazon said it was, you know, it's a piece of junk, don't get it. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> but, um, but mine, this particular machine that I got does work. Is it my favorite? Heck no. Would I recommend it? I mean, if you're just looking for a super cheap, super tight budget, then yes. But if you have the money, spend the extra couple of dollars and get the nicer, bigger, more expensive one. My sewing machine was only like $100. So that thing has lasted me almost eight years now. And it's, I mean, that's expensive to me, $100. But I know some of the crazy sewing machines that people have, those are in the thousands. Cheap to $100 is a big jump, comes with way more settings. So yeah, that is my review on this uh, thingamabob. <laughs> All right, I will catch you guys in the next crafty video.